was asking a couple guys and searching on the internet and stuff like that. Um, I was really interested in getting my Glock 19 stippled. And I'm looking around, looking at everybody stippling work, you know, and I'm like, you know what? I don't think there's any reason why I can't do this. Because, um, you know, we all have our thing. I'm pretty mechanical. I can do things with my hands. I was a welder and contractor and I draw. So it's kind of like related if you have that kind of a, a little bit of ability to be uh, coordinated, I guess. And um, I'm on this new medication now for my RA and it really is helping me. I said, you know what, Why, while this medication is working, I want to take advantage of this little window of relief that I got and try to stipple my Glock 19. And uh, what I did was I practiced on a PMAG first, which I took uh, my buddy Jonathan uh, advice. He said, practice on a PMAG first and see if you're happy with it. If you're happy with it, and you just do the same thing to your Glock. So I did, and the PMAG actually came out really good. Uh, I noticed the PMAG plastic, I know they're both poly polymer, but it is a little different than the Glock's plastic just by how the uh, soldering iron sinks into the plastic so you're going to have to uh, find that out for yourself on uh, the level of heat you need to do it so um, what was happening was my um, tail and grips were starting to come off the back end of the Glock and it wasn't the tail and grips fault it's probably because uh, I didn't heat it up enough when I pressed them on or I probably got some really strong solvent gun cleaner on the tile and grips, probably got underneath it, loosens the glue up and lifts them up. I see you now I'm just going to take the talons off, which I'm still a huge fan of talon grips, don't get me wrong. Um, and I'm going to stip on my Glock. This is my primary uh, pistol here, is my Glock 19. I carry it all the time. I carry it when I'm at work mostly. This is my, I guess you would call it a duty gun. I, call, I carry it in the gun shop at all times every time I'm working because it's not real big it holds a lot of ammunition and it's extremely reliable by the way we just hit 2,000 rounds with the with the Glock one jam and when I took the when I took the bullet out the casing on the bullet had that fold over and you guys ever seen that before but if I had a bullet here I'd show you oh here's here's a big bullet it's actually a lighter but the casing here was crimped at the factory and it was folded under and it had this big ripple in it so the bullet couldn't make it into the chamber because it wasn't the right size because of the of the uh, ripple not the guns fault as far as I'm concerned Glock 19 generation 3 2000 rounds 100 percent perfect this gun will go off will save my life if I have to use it 100 percent confident with it um, so here's what I did. Um, here's here's the uh, the gun. Okay, there it is. Give you a little close up of it. And what I did was, um, I was talking to a guy on uh, Facebook too. I want to thank him for uh, sending me pics of his work. It all helps. Now I am not a experienced stipple person, but what I can tell you this is because this looks halfway decent. The most important thing when you're doing this, because remember, you only got one shot at it, is decide what you're going to do, decide the pattern you're going to go with. I decided just to follow Glock's stippling and just go over top of that and just make it more aggressive. And I added this thumb circle here, too. The most important thing is when you're outlining, that has to be as straight as you possibly can do it. That's, that's what's going to make the job look nice. Now, if you're one of these guys that don't care and just scratch up your Glock for a fighting weapon and you don't care about looks or anything like that and your gun's a tool and all that stuff, that's fine. I admire guys like that. I don't know how you do it because I'm OCD, but I can't be like that. Um, you, guys, you guys might all just, just carry along, move along, and go watch another video because this is not going to uh, interest you at all. Because this is all about trying to be as perfect as you can when you're stippling your gun. So the spots that I stippled was the obvious Glock spots was this spot 
Well, this wasn't done. How I got this part done was I got a um, chalk. Actually, here it is. We used to use this in, in, uh, when I worked in the steel shop. It's like a pencil. It holds, uh, you know, a layout chalk on it. And I just sharpened it really, really sharp. And I made, I just followed the indentation with the chalk and just made a circle around it. And I just kept doing it and doing it and racing it and doing it till it looked as perfect as I could possibly make it. And that was my template. And then I got the soldering iron, which I'll show you in a second, and just followed the line all the way around. I did my whole outline first. And it looked good. So that's the easy part, filling it in. I mean, that's the hard part. Filling it in is the easy part. Same here. I didn't use chalk here because I didn't need chalk because Glock already had their their stamp on here. I just followed that. So what I did was I just made uh, a little indention, in, impression, 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 impression. It takes a real long time. Uh, get a fan blowing. Get your good eyeglasses on. Get a lot of light. This is important. But really, it's not hard. If, if you're guys out there, if you guys are like me, you're not a gunsmith, but you like to work on your guns because it's fun, this is something you can do, and it'll turn out and it'll look really nice. And it's something that, that you know won't look like a hack job in someone's basement. There's a better angle there. I'm trying to get the light just right so you can see the detail. Okay. That's about as close as I can get it. Okay, there you go. You said I did that side around the back. Now what I did on the back is I left this little part smooth just for cosmetic looks. thought it looked nice instead of doing the whole thing. But as you can see everything's pretty even. And then on this side is just that other panel which is done. Okay. And then what I did in the front straps is I just did in between the finger grooves. I didn't do the finger grooves, I did in between. So they were little squares but now they're very fine has like a rug type texture to it now. Okay. Man, I cannot I cannot steer with this camera. I just can't, I can't. So I didn't I know a lot of people do under here. I might do that. I don't know. I want to shoot the gun first. I'm not just gonna stipple stuff because to stipple stuff. I want to do it for a reason. My hands contact here, my palms contact here, and my thumb is always strongly in that little gully there and also I did this little square here because that's where my uh, support hand thumb always is on there and the problem is when I'm shooting when I'm shooting I notice even on the 9 millimeter, as I'm shooting the gun's going up and my thumb is slipping 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 off there every time it recoils every time so I don't know if that's going to stop it but it's definitely going to help it okay so there are the areas that I did I just wanted to show you that. Let me know what you guys think. First time I ever did it, you know, I'll probably be able to do it a little better next time, you know, but that to me, that looks good enough to where I'm not disappointed. I know it definitely can be better, but I'm not like, oh man, I shouldn't have did that. No, I'm glad I did it. It looks pretty, pretty good. It doesn't look great. What you can also do is, here's a PMAG for instance. And like I said, just get a P-Mag. P-Mags are cheap. I mean, we sell them at Double Action for 13 bucks. I got so many of them. You can't mess it up. And what you do is you get your... I got this one. This is a Weller soldering iron. Actually, it's on right now because i got to finish this mag. And this one goes up to 900 degrees. You probably don't need 900 degrees. They have the ones that go from a, to about 750. But I like the way this one was shaped. The other one looks like a gun. That's pretty hard to to stipple like that. This is more like a, uh, a shape to your hand and it's for more more detail work. You can hold it like that. It also has a little light on there too. So as you're working uh, it lights up your area. Light is like the most important thing. You can't have any shadows. You have to see exactly what you're doing. And you want a, f you want a fan blowing too because believe it or not when you're when you're doing a lot of dots the smoke gets thick and you can't see through the smoke. So you want a fan blowing the smoke away, you want a lot of light. And if you wear glasses, put your best pair on, is what I can tell you. And that's it. And I'll just give you a little demonstration. This is fully heated. And if I just started, I have this side done, and I'm just coming around this way. And you'll start to know 
when the lift off, you'll hear the sound that it makes. You'll hear a fizzle and then stop. Fizzle, then stop. I mean, and that's pretty much all I'm doing. I'm just trying to, like, like I said, the outline is most important. And I don't have a steady hand. I just, I shake a lot, so. And what I'm going to do is just outline the square first. As you go, your hand will get steadier. When you first start out, you're like, oh my god, I'm shaking all over. But as you put it down, you can kind of move it. Even if you're not quite in line, uh, you can steer it as it's melting. But you just got to know when to lift back off. It's like a three count. One, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. That's pretty much it. Two, three. That's important because you want every dot to be the same size. That's what makes it uniform. And the only way you can do that is put it down at a certain time every time, the same time. Okay? And there's your outline. I already got the outline done. You can see that. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done. I'm going to flip this mag around. You can mag can go from this. Okay? Seriously with this camera? There's the back to that. Really, really nice looking and traction up the ass. I mean, it's like sandpaper, looks good, doesn't look like it's all hacked up, you know what I mean? And this is, you know, I, have, I don't have a lot of patience. I can't sit here and do my PMAGs, but I'm going to do one. I was doing this all night watch, while I was watching TV. Just, it's like uh, the wife's knitting a blanket and you're, you'll be freaking stippling your mag. It's very time consuming. Looks really back good back here on the spine too. You can see that. So what I'll do is I'll, all I have left is this square, and then I gotta flip it over and I gotta do this whole other side, just from here down and then here. So it's probably another good hour's worth of work on it, but when it's done, uh, it's gonna look really nice and it'll have a lot of traction on there too. So there's something you can do right away if you wanna, you know, play around with your guns and do something, you know, fun with your guns. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. I uh, hope you liked it, of course. Um, what else do I want to show you? Oh, a little update on the uh, Six Hour AR. I'm uh, just glad to say that it's running phenomenal. I don't think I'm really going to do anything to it. The only things I've done to this AR is change a little bit of the furniture and, you know, of course, put the EOTech on there. We got about 150 to 200 rounds to it right now. Make sure she's she's all safe. Take my word for it. Okay, uh, it's running great. Um, the only thing that I can see that was kind of weird for some reason this Magpul flip-up sight it really has to be way way to the uh, left for it to shoot straight. I don't know why, but. It might be the sight. I'm thinking it's the sight. I don't think it's the gun. Because um, when I put it down and just use front sight, I can shoot straight with it and it doesn't feel like I'm holding it on any weird angle. The EOTech is 100% uh, sighted in, which that's primarily what I use with this when I'm shooting it is the EOTech. Okay? And that's working friggin' awesome. Um, I'm not going to get a. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to do this stuff where the, uh, the nickel boron bowl carrier. And this and that. I'm not messing with the internals, man, because you know what? The gun is working 100% and leave it factory. The factory knows what it's doing. I know I could get a belt, better bolt carrier. I know I can get a better bolt. But you know what? It might be cut in a way where it's not as reliable as this bolt. This bolt is telling me I'm, re I'm reliable. Keep me in there. So that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to uh, just leave it alone. Just, you know, it's silly. Just, just leave it alone. Okay, and put the stipple P-Mag in here, see what it looks like. I know it's not finished yet, but give you a cool look how it looks. You can see it, there you go. Shitty, here we go. Pretty cool. I has got one more, couple more squares to do, it look pretty nice. It looks nice and definitely uh, effective when you're taking it out, in and out. You really can grip it. It's really neat. So, excellent. Uh,
this little SIG M400 pistol is really doing well. Never cleaned it yet. Like I said, I got about 150, maybe 200 rounds through it, and uh, it's singing, singing like a champ. It's beautiful, beautiful little gun. I'm so glad I got that. I wasn't going to get it. So, guy, yeah, what do I need that for? I got a cold carbon carbine. You know what? What do I need that for? Well, because it's this little and it's legal. That's why. And that's why I got it. Uh, I got a Father's Day gift today from the from my son. I think if you guys are like 40 years old and or 46 years old and younger, you'll remember this show. I was like, man, they have all these old TV shows on, and whatever happened to Welcome Back, Cotter? Why is that not on television? And the funny thing is, I just noticed they're putting it on TV now. And now at the same time, I got this. Oh, this show just brings back so many memories. I just want to show you guys I got this for Father's Day. It's very late present because it wasn't released till August. So I think it's pretty cool. I, I, I probably was a sweat hog. Was, there's no doubt in my mind. Definitely. I was a sweat hog. I hated school and I acted like a, I acted like a douchebag. <laughs> But this is a funny, funny show. If you've never seen this, you younger guys, welcome back, Cotter. Uh, so I just wanted to show that. I know you older guys will appreciate it. You know, not older guys, guys my age will appreciate seeing this. Brings back a lot of memories. Mr. Friggin' Woodman, you gotta be kidding me. Love it. King of Queens, that's probably my number one favorite show. Um, that's all I got for you guys. So, you know, I was gonna do an instructional video on how to do this because I thought it looked good enough that I could do that but I just showed you it's 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 very very simple very very simple equal pressure make every circle try to make every circle you make the same size all the way around and the uh, what do you call it right uh, I always go blank like that I must be getting I must be going uh, see I can't even think what I'm going senile or a dementia. I think it's really kicking in young. Uniformed, that's the thing. Keep everything the same size, everything the same size, and it'll look impressive. So, there it is. That's that. And uh, if you're going to do it, I recommend I recommend this soldering iron. This is pretty good. It did, did a good job with this. Uh, there's ones where you can get different tips and all and have all kinds of fancy stuff. I don't know, maybe get one of them later, but right now this is definitely uh, $27, definitely good enough to uh, do a nice upgrade on your firearm. Awesome. Anything else I want to show you? i got a couple more. I have another light coming from through night. Something, it's it's a little bit different. And, uh, you know, guys, uh, it's it's great that, they, that they're sending the, uh, the lights in and all that. Because uh, I never had flashlights on my videos before. It's just something different, you know. I mean, guns are primary, and we do that, but the lights are cool. I like to get a couple knives, too. I did get a new zero-tolerance knife with the Tiger Stripe blade. Man, you got to see it. I'll show it in another video. Actually, I'll show it when the through knight comes. I'll show it with that. It's really a heavy-duty knife. It's beautiful. I'll show you guys that knife. And that's pretty much it for now. Um, oh, yeah, one thing I wanted to say. When you're doing... You got to remember the, the bottom of this magazine plate comes off. It's designed to come off. So when you're doing down here, along the bottom of the magazine plate, try not to hit the plate because what you're going to do is end up welding because you're melting the plastic, right? You're going to end up welding the bottom plate to the mag, and if you want to get it off, it's going to be very hard to get off, or you're not going to be able to get it off. So try to try to watch your angles. Don't melt this. Okay, a little tip right there. I hope that helped you. I love these P-Mags. What is it? Gen 2 mag. Very nice. Alright guys, take it easy. I'll talk to you soon.